Have you ever been frustrated by blurry photos in your photography? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you never have to feel that feeling again and get tack sharp focus every single time you take an image. Hey, what's up guys? And welcome into the Landscape Photography University channel. My name's David Johnston. And in this channel, we help you understand photography the best so that you're actually excited about the photos that you take. If you're into that, hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell below. Let's look at these two photos on my computer screen. As you can see, they're slightly different. Landscape photography is so unlike any other genre of photography because we deal with depth so much more than any other kind of photography. If you look at this photo, there are basically two different depths in this image. That's the foreground that's in the bottom of the photo and then the background in the top of the photo. The foreground and the background are so far apart from each other. The foreground, these rocks are literally at my feet that I'm photographing. So it's it's basically impossible for your camera to focus both on the rocks and on the waterfall in the background. This can result in blurry photos and you may have experienced this yourself in having either the foreground or the background slightly out of focus. And that's the worst because there's no getting around that whatsoever. The photo is unusable. So here's how to correct that easily. Basically, you take two different photos in the field. There's one photo that you take for focusing on the foreground. And in this photo, I use the rocks as a focal point for my foreground, even down to the pixel layer, you can see that this very edge of the rock and these grasses are in focus. And then for the other photo, I use the log in the background for my focal point. So if I zoom in here to the pixel layer, you can even see that the moss and the log are in focus. Now, why did I use these two things for the focus instead of the waterfall or the water ridge that's in the foreground? I used hard edges, basically the rocks and the log, because the water is constantly moving and my focus could jump throughout the photo. So I wanna use something that's stagnant and that has a very hard edge on it that allows me to focus to those things. Even using something as F16 and having a small aperture to give me the most amount of focus, I would still get soft focus in this photo. That's why the fail safe version of getting a photo like this is using focus stacking and focusing on something in the foreground versus something in the background in a second photo. Now you blend those together using focus stacking in your computer. In just a second, I'm gonna show you exactly how to easily do that and anyone in their photography journey can do this, whether you're a beginner or a pro. But first I wanna tell you, if you've ever struggled with composition, focus, or understanding post-processing like we're talking about in this video, I wanna invite you to join Landscape Photography University. In the membership, you get tons of courses on how to improve your landscape landscape photography, plus you're gonna get weekly Ask Me Anythings or live one-on-one -on -one photo critique so that you can see how to improve your photography and what you need to work on to get better. That's in the video description and in the pinned comments. Let's jump into how to actually do this. So in Lightroom, I'm gonna select the first photo, hold down my shift key and select the second photo. And then I'm going to right click on that selection, go to edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. Now, the reason I want to open these as layers in Photoshop is because I don't want two separate files going on in my Photoshop. What I want is two layers that are stacked on top of each other because I'm gonna be blending these together with masks. Now, maybe some of you like recoiled and got nervous when I said masking, and maybe you don't know how to use masking yet, but you don't actually have to know how to use masking for this technique, it's super easy. So I have two different layers in my layers panel down here, and I'm gonna hold down my shift key after I've selected the top layer, and I'm gonna select the bottom layer while holding that shift key down. I'm gonna go up to edit, and then I'm gonna scroll down to auto align layers. With it on auto, I'm just gonna hit okay. What this is doing is it's aligning these two layers together because while you're refocusing to your background image from your foreground image, two things could happen. Number one, you could slightly bump your camera and shift it to the left or to the right on accident, or your lens could actually do something called focus breathing where it slightly adjusts the composition. Maybe it looks like it zoomed out a little bit and this just fixes that issue. So if you had any bumping like I did, you can see 
on the right side of this photo, you have like a gray and white dashed line. I can just crop that out later. It looks like I bumped my lens slightly to the left and got just a slightly different composition here. With these two selected, what I'm gonna go to next is edit auto blend layers. And when I select auto blend layers, I'm gonna have stacked images selected and I'm gonna hit okay. What this is doing is Photoshop is actually creating masks that will find the most in focus parts of the photo and blend those together for you without you even knowing how to do any of this. If you look, I now have different layers down here. And if I hold down my alter option key and select this mask, you can see what the mask actually looks like. So the white parts of the mask are the parts that were the most in focus and now have been masked in to the final photo. So if I select the bottom layer here and hold down my alter option key and select that mask, you'll see that the opposite is true. The white parts are in the background. That's because this was the background focus shot for this focus stack. Now those blended together result in this top photo called the merged photo so that the entire photo is in focus tack sharp from foreground all the way to the background. If you wanna save this, you just go to File, Save, and that's going to save it back into your Lightroom catalog. If you want more videos on how to perfect your landscape photography, click or tap the card showing up on your screen right now.